USC's Miller Moss stepped in for Caleb Williams in the Holiday Bowl and threw six touchdown passes. We expect more of that? I'm not so sure. But we take a look at the Trojans' spring plans. Locked on Big Ten starts right now. You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Lockdown Big Ten. I'm Craig Sheeman. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We always appreciate you guys. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our good friends at FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you get $150 of bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right, USC spring plans, Miller Moss. We're going to dive into that, plus the latest news. Ohio State's zoning in on a basketball coach, and we've got our picks going into the weekend. Be sure to subscribe. That really helps us out. We always ask you to do that. It's free, and you can follow Lockdown Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way, you'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. All right, a lot has been said here and elsewhere about the USC Trojans and how they will do in the defensive-minded Big Ten. Look, they're going to score a lot of points. That's what they do. They just can't stop anybody, ever. Lincoln Riley coach teams that have always been this way, whether it be at Oklahoma or Southern Cal. It's just in his coaching DNA. It's part of the deal. So what's going to change this spring for the Trojans is that Heisman winning quarterback Caleb Williams, as you know, is gone. Some say good riddance, really. Uh, although that may be totally unfair, but he probably is going to be the first player drafted in the NFL draft. He did have a disappointing season this season following his Heisman Trophy year. I've heard everything there is to hear about Williams in his tenure at Southern Cal. Last year, uh, all we heard about him is he was a can't-miss prospect in the NFL. I heard he was the most sure thing since Peyton Manning left Tennessee. But you didn't hear that as much in the past six months. Instead, you hear things like he always goes for the home run and doesn't really check down. His footwork needs work, all that kind of stuff. Regarding him throwing the home run ball all the time, look, that's the way he's coached. I think that's what Lincoln Raleigh tells him to do. Is he capable of checking down in the NFL? Yeah, I think he will be. So I think some of this stuff is somewhat unfair. Personally, I would be just a little bit more concerned about the video of him or the game I watched where he crawled into his mother's lap in the front row of the stands after a loss and balled up in a fetal position after a tough loss. Is that who you want? in your locker room with 53 grown men, you know, being a leader, displaying that kind of stuff. Can't do that in the NFL. Shouldn't do it in division one college football, but enough about that. Let's look into the future here. Williams wisely opted out of playing in USC's holiday bowl and their win over Louisville. Look, he couldn't get hurt. Got a big draft to think about. So be it, but he's quickly forgotten Heisman and all because USC's next man up quarterback Miller Moss, Stepped in and threw six touchdown passes in one game. Fight on, as they say at USC. That should get everybody excited. I think it does. I think it did. The question going into spring ball now, as that's right around the corner, is whether Moss continue can can continue to be that guy. Is he going to air it out like that? Is he score multiple touchdowns every game? You know how consistent will he look this spring? Will he dominate the spring game? Will he dominate the Big Ten coming up in 2024? Look, the Holiday Bowl was Moss's first collegiate start. First ever. Only one. That's it. That's all we have on him. It was in front of a national televised, uh, nationally televised audience. It was in a bowl game. Um, his pregame plan to remain cool. He says meditate, listen to good music, and then go ball. It's the kind of guy he is. Hey, by the way, what kind of music do you ask? Yeah, well, he says he listens to anything from the Beatles to Drake to Jay-Z. I don't know. Maybe fire that up in your ear when you're at work one day. His performance in that game was important for a couple of reasons. USC had started 6-0. and 
They lost five of the last six. That's the disappointing part of Caleb Williams last season there. But with that win, it allowed them to finish on a positive note, finish with an eight and five record. Very respectable. The other thing I noticed that a lot of other quarterbacks that were rumored to come to Southern Cal in the transfer portal, they didn't. They didn't come. They uh there was only one game, but they saw that quarterback out there throw six touchdown passes. They're like, hmm, I'm not going out there and competing with that dude for the job. Not going to USC. If you don't believe me, how about Kansas State's Will Howard? He was going to USC. Now he's at Ohio State. Figure it out. We'll get plenty of chances to see Will Howard in the Big Ten. So the question is, who is Miller Moss? And how did he get to USC? Well, they really didn't have to go far. He's from Los Angeles. He's modest of size, 6'2", 200 pounds. Not bad. After graduating high school early, he enrolled at USC in the spring of 2021, saw limited action in two games, threw one touchdown. In 2022, he threw one touchdown in five games, limited backup action. In fact, he'd already earned his bachelor's degree in law, history, and culture with a minor in business finance last spring. He did all that in two years. Smart guy. Needless to say, he made the 2021 and 2022 Pac-12 honor roll. Good job. Other than that, it's all we really know about him. Was the six-touchdown bowl game an anomaly or a glimpse of what is yet to come? We have no way of really knowing just yet. This is why he'll be under the microscope when he performs this spring. Of all the teams in the Big Ten that we're excited to look at and dissect a little bit, here in the spring with spring football, USC's on that list. The Trojan spring game is slated for April 20th after 15 scheduled practices. And while we've talked about the USC offense and we've besmirched the defense a little bit, we should point out, in fairness, that Lincoln Rally did make a change to defensive coordinator this year. Finally got rid of his longtime friend and uh, coach Alex Grinch and replaced him with Danton Lynn, who came from uh, across town to UCLA uh, to be the defensive coordinator. And before, uh, before that, he was the safeties coach with the Baltimore Ravens. Last time I checked, Baltimore Ravens played defense over there. Got that part figured out. So maybe that'll be a very good move. As far as Grinch goes, who got fired, guess where he landed? Wisconsin, you Badger fans, we're going to get to see more of him in the Big Ten. I don't know if that's good or bad. We'll find out. So once we get everything settled in SoCal, Lincoln Riley needs to be ready to ready to go here right away. Miller Moss needs to be ready to go right away. The men of Troy open up the 2024 season in Las Vegas in the Las Vegas kickoff classic against LSU on ABC. All going to see it on display, national TV, kicking things off at the beginning of the season. Then they get a little breather, I call it that, against Utah State before an early bye. They need that because then it's off to Ann Arbor to the big house to take on the defending national champion, Michigan Wolverines. So it is going to be interesting early. We are going to learn a lot early about this USC Trojan football team. Also, that's not all. The schedule's dotted with dates against Penn State, Wisconsin, Notre Dame. It's the real deal. Uh, a Big Ten schedule and a non-conference schedule with LSU and Notre Dame, that should get your attention. That's pretty good, pretty respectable, pretty hard. But if Miller Moss is half as good as advertised, then that's a pretty good start. How about you guys at USC? Would love to hear from you. Hit us up at Twitter, X at Talk Big Ten. Love your comments on your expectations. And what you're going to be looking for here this spring out of Boston, everybody else with the USC Trojans. Always excited to hear. If you don't hit me up on Twitter, don't forget you can hit me up with the comments on YouTube as well. And don't forget our website. I got the scroll here for another minute on uh, on the bottom. TalkBig10, number 10.com. TalkBig10.com. We've got a lot of great stuff there. Uh, merchandise from all your favorite schools, pennants, shirts, hats, ticket information for basketball, next year's football, all there right there. On our website, talk big 10, uh, number 10.com. All right. Uh, in the meantime, uh, coming up, we've got a lot of interesting information that uh, I want to talk about. We'll share that with you in a little bit. Um, we've got uh, Northwestern football really doesn't have a place to play this year. And we take a look at coaching salaries now that Nick Saban and Jim Harbaugh are gone. Who are the highest paid guys? And where do those big 10, where do their coaches fall on that list as well? And 
The Ohio State Buckeyes, as you know, they are in the market for a new basketball coach. They may have zeroed in on their guy already. All that is coming up in one minute right here on Locked On Big Ten. I want to tell you about Ibotta. Ibotta. You know, we've got grocery bills and shopping and everything expensive, but it doesn't have to be as expensive anymore. Start getting cash back on your grocery shopping or all your other shopping with the free Ibotta app and get cash back every time you shop. Ibotta is a free app and it gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys to trips anything. It, uh, it is all out there and help you beat inflation a little bit. The average Ibotta user earns $256 back each year. That's the cost of another entire grocery ship uh, 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 trip uh, to get your groceries. And you, you get an airline ticket. You can get lots of stuff out there. Join the over 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from the over 2,700 brands and retailers, including Lowe's, Macy's, everywhere you go. Uh, right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners five bucks just for trying them out. Try Ibotta by using the code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. You know that one when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use the code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE. That's Ibotta, I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use the code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE with Ibotta. I want to thank everybody for checking us out and uh, you everydayers here. Thanks for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen each and every day. Meanwhile, be sure to subscribe before you go. And uh, that's on YouTube. You can share, follow, and like Lockdown Big Ten, your team every day. And once again, don't forget our website, talkbig10number10.com. All right. I read a report, and it's the second one that I've read that the Ohio State Buckeyes are in early talks with Florida Atlantic head coach Dusty May about the school's men's basketball coaching job that uh, opened up last week when they fired Chris Holtman. Buckeyes are not expected to announce a hiring until mid-March. Besides, May will be busy probably till then. Jake Diebler will be the Buckeyes interim head coach till the end of the season, whenever that comes. And um, May would be a good get. He'd be a good get at Florida Atlantic in six years. He's won twice as many games as he's lost. And, of course, he led the Owls to the Final Four last season. Currently makes about $1.6 million. And uh, after February 29th, his buyout is just a million bucks. Ohio State can handle that. But May is going to be coaching after that date. So this may they may have to massage dates if they're really interested in them. The Owls are 20 and 6. They're 10 and 3 in the AAC. Remember, they're in Conference USA last year. And oh, by the way, May is an Indiana grad, graduated in 2000. So you'd be pretty comfortable in the Big Ten. Keep your eye on that one as they continue with their search for a new head coach at Ohio State. Hey, now that Nick Saban is gone and retired from Alabama and Jim Harbaugh is no longer leveraging Michigan for a contract, who are the highest paid football coaches in the Big Ten in the country for that matter? I found a list that has been updated. Would you be surprised to learn that now Dabo Sweeney is the next man up on the list at Clemson? He is the highest paid coach at $11.5 million a year with a salary. Um, I, I only say surprise because... Clemson hasn't really been too relevant the past couple of years, although he had a good run before that. Georgia's Kirby Smart comes in next at $10.7 million. At least he's only a year removed from back-to-back -back national championships. Steve Sarkeesian, who just, just this week finalized the deal to enter the $10 million club at Texas, coming in at $10.3 million. Ryan Day is the high, highest-paid coach in the Big Ten. That's uh, well, That's been the case for some time. Uh, $10.2 million a year, and that's good for fourth place in the country, fourth highest paid coach in the country. USC's Lincoln Riley, he's tied for fifth with Alabama's Kalen DeBoer and Florida State's Mike Norvell at a cool even $10 million a year. Below that, we got Penn State's James Franklin. He's 12th in the country, coming in at 8.5. I actually thought it was closer to 10, but it was 8.5 what I saw today. He is under contract through 2031. 
And Wisconsin's Luke Fickle in his second year at Wisconsin. He's 14th in the country at $7.6 million a year. Speaking of football, so the, the Northwestern, Northwestern Wildcats had a pretty surprisingly good season last season. David Braun earned Big Ten Coach of the Year honors after taking over following the hazing scandal that plagued them last summer and took a team that had one win the season before and had a pretty good year, went on to an 8-5 and five record and a win in the Las Vegas Bowl over Utah. Great year. All right, big things are happening over there. Even Braun, before he took over and good things started to happen, they had some plans in motion at Northwestern to renovate Ryan Field, pretty old uh, football stadium there. But now they kind of need a place to play. Uh, it's getting a major redo. Demolition has already started, and they're finding various different locations around Chicago to go play football. Uh, they've got a couple of things. They've got seven home games next year. Nothing's been done. Nothing's been finalized. Now they're close on two games getting the contracts buttoned up. They host Indiana. That'll be at Seat Geek Stadium on October 5th. And they will host Ohio State at Wrigley Field on November 16th. Everything else, I don't know that they're close. Lambeau Field and Soldier Field are also options. And uh, again, the, even the IU and the Ohio State game, they're not they don't have the signature on the contract yet. But anyway, overall, uh, Ryan Field should look pretty nice when it's all said and done. They're going to pour $800 million into the stadium for reconstruction. It should be done in time for the 2026 season. So we got to do this all over again in 2025 as well. Good luck to them. It'll be uh, look good when it's all done. Hey, I want to remind you that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's called Locked On Sports Today. It's here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts on Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. You'll even find this, Locked On Big Ten, over on there for an encore, if you will. All right. If you're uh, if you're new to our uh, podcast, uh, by the way, thank you for finding us. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you're new or not, please feel free to tell everybody you know about us, especially your Big Ten alum and friends. In our final segment, depending on what the day of the week is, we do a special features. Monday, we always do our Big Ten top ten observations from the weekend. Tuesdays, we uh, it's kind of like a it's like a mailbag segment, if you will, on Twitter. Uh, Tuesday tweets. And on Wednesdays, we have our Big Ten Power Rankings. Also on Thursdays, we take a look at Big Ten Classics and live programming upcoming on the weekend of the Big Ten Network. And on Fridays, we do picks, either picks, skin picks during football or basketball picks. So we will do that coming up in just a minute. i uh, got all the uh, basketball teams in action around the Big Ten. We'll run them down and make our predictions. I've been red hot lately. On fire. So we'll share those with you. In just a minute, right here on Locked Out Big Ten. Speaking of picks, get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 of bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams. They've got quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, over-unders, money line. You know, they, got, they have it all. Anything you can think of, it's there, especially with the NBA. So uh, speaking of the NBA, back in action following the All-Star break, we haven't quite recovered from the almost 400-point performance on the total of the All-Star game, but back to real basketball. Got one for you here tonight. Bucks and Timberwolves. My hot tip, it's free. It's absolutely free. Uh, the Timberwolves are four and a half point favorites at home. And I like them. I like them to win. I like them to cover 39 and 16 on the year. Timberwolves. Very good. Meanwhile, the bucks are a train wreck. They were good. Then they fired their coach. Then they hired doc rivers and he won like two of their first 10 games. It's a, and now they're coming off the break. Who knows what they're going to look like, but I like the Timberwolves at home against the bucks tonight to cover the four and a half. All right. Uh, just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. Just like I just did fanduel official sportsbook partner of the NBA. 
All right. Uh, let's uh, get ready for our picks here for the weekend. All right. And I'm going to take this down so I can go full screen. I'll describe it to you on if you're listening on audio only. Let you know what's going on here. Got all the games for this upcoming weekend around the Big Ten. We're going to start it off with a couple of Saturday games. Got Indiana at Penn State. That's a nooner at uh, Saturday on the Big Ten Network. All right. And I, um, Indiana is not playing well right now. Now, Penn State's already beaten them. They came into Bloomington and won in Bloomington for the first time in like 10 years, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Now, Indiana goes to Penn State. Indiana's also coming off a loss to Nebraska. It was the first time Nebraska had won on the road in the Big Ten all season long. Nebraska outscored them from the three-point arc 42 to 12. Ouch. It was bad. I like Penn State in this game. Penn State, on the other hand, they uh they came off that they were down 14 to Illinois. Illinois is good. This was at Penn State at their at their rec house, not in the regular uh, arena. Down 14, they come back and win by one. It was an exciting game. And fun fact for Penn State, even if they're uh if they're down. In the game, don't count them out. Maybe some in-game live betting fan duel, maybe. Hmm? Um, four of their seven Big Ten wins, they've been down by double figures, and they've come back to win. So I, I like Penn State in this game. Um, elsewhere on Saturday, also the Big Ten Network, we got Iowa at number 12, Illinois. That's a 215 on the Big Ten Network. And again, I just mentioned the Illinois collapse at Penn State. So be careful with that. And um, Terrence Shannon, he's playing great. He's playing great. It, I, there aren't too many players in the country playing better than Terrence Shannon right now. So uh, anyway, uh, check that out. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Illinois every time I pick Il Iowa to lose, and if they win, I always get a comment uh, from one particular guy on uh, on the comments. So that's cool. <laughs> I'll, I'll root for you, for you, but I'm, I'm going to take uh, Illinois on this one. All right. Uh, Maryland at Rutgers on Sunday at noon on the Big Ten Network. Maryland uh, just came off that 74-70 uh, loss at Wisconsin on Tuesday. Wisconsin desperately needed a win in that game. Rutgers uh, had the... Um, um, they just played uh, last night at uh, West Lafayette. That that wasn't fun. So I'm gonna ah, that's this is at Rutgers. I'm gonna take Rutgers because it's at Rutgers. Got plenty of risk. You know what? I think Maryland's a better team. I'm gonna change it on the fly right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna take Maryland to win this football this uh, basketball game. Okay, how's that? Uh, let's see what else we got here. Purdue number three. Purdue. At, uh, at Michigan, CBS, Sunday, 2 o'clock, Purdue, all day long. All day long. <laughs> Ohio State is at Michigan State. That's a Sunday at 4 o'clock on CBS. Now, Ohio State, they just beat Purdue last weekend with their new interim coach there. Michigan State has been hot. I've been building them up. And then they go lose to Iowa. Uh, I am going to take Michigan State to win this game. I still think, even even though they had the hiccup against Iowa, Michigan State is uh, is uh, is still on the upswing. Getting they're getting ready for March. They're playing March basketball, and then finally Minnesota and Nebraska Sunday night six thirty on the Big Ten Network. Uh, I love Nebraska at home. Heck, they look like they were at home when they wanted Indiana this week. You, again, they, they've winning all their games at home in the Big Ten, and then they, they didn't win any on the road all season until they went to Bloomington. They finally looked like the home version on the road. They are putting it together on the road at home. Nebraska, I'm telling you, I've been telling you for – I'm one of the first people in the country to say Nebraska is a tournament team. I think it's more obvious now, but a couple weeks, three weeks ago, and nobody's talking about them. I was, we were, you were right here on Lockdown Big Ten. So those are my picks for the weekend. So check those out. Enjoy the games. Should be fun. And um, I wish you have a great weekend. That's uh, that's about it. Don't forget, you can check, uh, you can be in contact with me over the weekend uh, on Twitter at Talk Big Ten X at Talk Big Ten Number Ten, uh, YouTube comments, and also on the website Talk Big Ten Number Ten dot com. And be sure to subscribe if you don't mind, and follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app. 
And that way you get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it becomes available each and every day. And then when you're done, don't forget to check out uh, Lockdown Sports today as well, 24-7, always streaming. That'll do it. Have yourself a wonderful weekend. Thanks for checking us out. Can't wait till we talk on Monday after who knows what's going to happen with the basketball, more football news. We will have it all right here. This is your source, Lockdown Big Ten. I'm Craig Sheeman. Thank you. Talk to you next time.